Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and today I'm going to be using a fragrance called Gilded Amber. It's a fragrance from Rustic Essentials, and it's got a real subtle quality to it. Um, I like the uh, scent of amber. I've, I've used it before. It just gives this kind of soft perfume, musty, mysterious scent, and I really like it in the soap for those very reasons. So I took the hint from the name of the fragrance, Gilded Amber, and looked at photos of amber and gold because they're very closely related because they emanate three or four or five different colors at least. Um, you'll see yellows, oranges, uh, um, maroon color too, that browns are also in that gold. But if you had to eliminate a lot of colors and bring it down to just three, what would you use to give you this idea of gold or amber? So I looked at some photos that I took in St. Petersburg, Russia on a trip years ago. And here's this statue of this lion. And if you look at it very closely, you'll see the brightest parts are this um, bright yellow, but there are also oranges and deep reds, browns, rust colors all mixed throughout this. If you look very closely at it, let me bring you close to the mane of this lion. And you see all those colors there. Well, those are some of the colors that I'm going to put in this soap. Then I'll show you to this golden room that is also at uh, Catherine's Palace in St. Petersburg as well. And you can see that this room is just glowing and it's, uh, it's like a gilt gold, but um, when you see the reflections of it, you see yellows, oranges, reds, browns, and there's some even greens in the ceiling if you look at that. And then I had some soap that I used a gold mica on. This is my avocado soap. And this is very different when you use a, um, when you use a gold mica on the top of a soap. It really does lay flat and give you this metallic shiny quality to it depending on how much you use. But I'm talking about when you integrate gold micas into soaps, you lose that because it becomes very matte. So I wanted to mix colors to give you that idea of amber and gold within the soap itself. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit to the top with this soap called Gilded Amber. So let's get started on the color tutorial. Okay, is it always helpful to look at some kind of visual um, photograph or um, painting, whatever you find as your resource material for a color, especially like gold, where it has a lot of colors that make it up with all the reflections. So the first thing I notice is that a big component of um, gold, if you're trying to capture it with color as opposed to metallic paint, is the brightness of the yellow that's reflected. And then um, I'm going to use in the soap uh, a gold mica and when you mix gold mica with soap, you lose the metallic part of it, unless you're using it as a drizzle on top of the soap. And I showed you in the intro my avocado soap where I used a mica drizzle on top. And so it looks more of a metallic gold. So this is um, how I make the gold look like gold. Is I combine a little brown, a little yellow, a little bit of orange and that's basically what the gold mica looks like when it's combined in the soap. Maybe it has a little bit of white to it. So something like that. It's been pretty close. It's hard to replicate. And I'm also going to use orange. And I'm not going to mix the colors together. They're going to be side by side in the soap. So I have that orange. And then there's this um, burgundy-like red color. And I had to make that with my watercolors with some red. I'm showing you how I mixed it. Maybe a little bit of purple. and some brown. It's a very earthy, almost terracotta-like red. I'll show you the mica. It's very unusual. I got this one's called 
Passionata Mica from Rustic Essentials, and I just use it right from the jar. But this is the color I'm trying to replicate with the mix of watercolor for sake of explanation. And then the whole thing is going to be on a backdrop of the lightest purple that I can get. And that's going to be the base. And I'm using purple because purple is the opposite or complementary color to yellow. And so I think that's going to really show off the golden color set I've selected. So that's the color tutorial. And um, really, it's a tutorial about mixing, but not about the color wheel in this case. But um, just to let you know, the yellow and the orange, <laughs> excuse me, the yellow and the purple are opposites. So that's going to be a nice uh, light contrast because I made this such a pale pastel version of purple. Okay, so let's get to the soap. Giving this a quick blend, just the oils and everything except the lye. Now let's get the lye in there. Just using these as accent colors. And just a little bit of yellow. And I looked at an amber gemstone to get the idea for how to color the amber, because amber is not just one color. And I'm going to add my mix of two different purples and titanium dioxide to the main mix. That looks like it's going to be plenty. And let's look at the fragrance in there and blend. Actually, I'm going to blend that a little first. I'm going to blend everything first before I get the fragrance in. Yellow. There's my gold. Orange and an oxide looking color called Passionata. Get my fragrance. It's a soft fragrance. I like a good amber scent. So I'm blend this one first. Okay, so I'm going to do an in the pot swirl with all these colors. Just making sure it's all loosened up and free of bubbles. I have to say, no rising, and this fragrance is really behaving itself. It's not been tested as far as acceleration and discoloration yet. And I picked purple as the base, a really light pastel purple, because I thought that would really showcase the orange and yellow, practically opposites. Okay, so let's see. I'll put a little bit of each so they get really mixed well, without being mixed, I guess striated. The orange is the thickest so far. I'm trying to pour in different locations in there, but I'm trying to be fast also. I also have some gold mica mixed in some olive oil to use as a mica, mica drizzle on top. That is some great color going on in there. You can see that. And I'll leave some of this for the top. OK. 
Okay. Let's give this purple a little bit more of a stir. It's getting a little thick. I'm going to get most of that in. Nice and smooth. And now for this, which is still fluid, I'm going to pour it from high up so it goes in deep. Getting a lot of nice bubbles in there, oh boy. But I'll pound that out. Beautiful. That rusty orange of the Passionata mica looks really beautiful against that light purple. So amber is a real soft fragrance and I thought about a color scheme for this that was mainly golds and a light yellow and I had just done a soap like that nothing wrong with that design but I wanted something with a little bit more uh, zing to it so I thought about adding the oranges I actually looked at pictures of amber and that really did help but it didn't have a purple background so what I have to do is think about what background color would show this off the best and I came up with the purple it's like nice fall colors on the top of the soap and lastly I saved some of this purple I don't know if you've ever done this where you've saved your colors for the top and then you completely cover over one of your colors so I've been getting a little more smart about that. Okay what I'm going to do is partially swirl the top and then add my gold. I have two different kinds of gold. I don't know if they'll make a difference. One is 24 karat gold mica and the other one is sparkling gold mica. So I'm going to go in one direction first. Then I'm going to dribble my micas. The lighter one is the 24 karat. Beautiful mica. And the other one is the Sparkling gold. I don't think it's gonna really make a big distinction between these two golds, but I wanted to compare them since I one of them is new to me. The sparkling gold one is new to me. Then I'm gonna go back in the other diagonal. And that's it. There's enough sparkle in there, I think, that I'm not going to put any glitter. And there you go. Just make sure you can see that. And then we'll come back really shortly for the cut. Okay, so let's see how this works out. Took a cut already. So I wanted it to look like amber and I wanted it to um, contrast 
a bit so I really lightened the opposite color of the yellows with that really light faint purple. But I like how the warmer colors really work well together. There's no flatness in the drop pour. So you can see I'm cutting these in sample size thickness. So I'm just going to cut a couple more because you get the idea. Oh, I really like that. It looks very fiery. I like that one too. So you get those long strands when the soap is very liquid and the key is to uh, keep it liquid even though you have so many colors involved so you have to work quickly and you need a recipe that stays as liquid as possible and you also need a fragrance that behaves itself and this one did And let's do one more for you. Thanks for watching, by the way. Really appreciate that. It's nice to know people are watching. So we spend a lot of time, particularly in the editing. And I enjoy everything, but uh, I wouldn't do this if people didn't watch. Okay, I guess I'll do one more and say goodbye. And we'll talk to you later. Bye, everybody.